Why is it so dark? Oh, my dipshit lights aren't on. There we go, now it looks super cool. So one of the last videos I posted was me just simply answering your questions that you left on YouTube. It was probably one of the quicker and easier videos I made and ironically kind of is performing better than all of the other ones. So if you guys like that stuff, we'll keep doing it. So let's answer the questions that you guys left on that video. Now there's a whole bunch, so we're gonna try and go through most of these pretty quick. <laughs> uh, where do I get the switches? Which I'm guessing was a joke because that was covered in the video, but Turns out the guy asking about the switches wasn't talking about the buttons, he was talking about the eight position rotary switch thing. And that particular one is from Sloppy Mechanics and they have all kinds of cool plug and play options as well. So go check out their site. I think inventory is just posted as they're available and they sell out really quick. So keep an eye out when they say that they have some available, go buy them and then you can have one too. All right, I have a stock LS thing, Terminator X. Got it to run on self-learn. Runs got a high RPM then starts backfiring. Switch the learn and close the loop parameters. So this is real common with... <sighs> you turn the camera on and then they start 40 different cars at the same time over there. So yeah, this is what a lot of people get, I, I guess and they're just scared of the software. And rather than actually making like fuel or timing changes, all they do is change the closed loop and the learn values as far as uh, how much it will allow it to change. And you're not really accomplishing much of anything at that point. So it sounds like you just simply need to tune this. Backfiring a lot of times is a timing issue, but that's kind of almost hard to mess up on an LS since everything's fixed as far as the cam and crank and there's you know no distributor to sync or anything like that. But yeah, you just gotta check and see what's going on and actually actually tune the thing. I'm not sure why anyone asked you a question he doesn't answer anything. So I have like hundreds of videos on here and they all get hundreds of questions. And in order to answer all of these questions, it would I'd probably have to hire two or three people. Uh, plus then you got you know the other 20 different social media platforms and then my email is basically a full-time job in itself so i do answer some i just don't answer all it's physically impossible but i did the best as i can pro gamers will go make videos and critique other novice gamers in their streams it could be fun to watch you critique other people trying to tune holly efi so i um i don't really watch much of any car related stuff on YouTube. But I have seen similar stuff like that and uh, that could be cool. But in order for that to happen, I think someone would just have to send me videos of stuff that would work because I'm sure they don't have the time to just go and hunt down videos. And I ain't got time for that shit. All right. uh, and then I find most of the car related YouTube stuff just absolutely painful to watch. So maybe I just haven't come across the right stuff yet. So I'm not opposed to it, but I don't have the time to search for it. So if you want to send an example or something, I'd take a look at it. Have to understand the EFI is over most people's heads on how to set up and tune. If only somebody offered an online course teaching you how to do that with Holly EFI specifically. We made a cable to hook to our, Jesus, I can't read. We made a cable to hook to the new connector on the Sniper 2 and was able to tune it with a laptop. Yes, yeah, so you can absolutely make a cable for that. And I just think it's crazy that, that Holly released it before the cable was available. This whole thing is bullshit. Cause you gotta think, you know, a lot of these guys kind of struggle with red wire goes to power, black wire goes to ground. Everyone's so scared of this stuff that if you start telling them to make a connector or modify something, people modify an entire car, build the, rebuild the frame, the suspension, all of it. But when it comes to changing out a two pin connector, uh, you know, they don't, they don't want to hear it. So um, actually, Most of my can stuff's actually set up on these two pin DP DTM connectors. These are all from Monkey Fab Garage. I ran out, so I ordered a bunch more. Oh, cool. So they have a bunch of cool stuff. Go check them out. So I bought a Mustang, Stroker, Holly, Sniper. What's the first step I should take in learning about the Sniper? All right, this aim more as a personal question, if allowed, not allowed. I know briefly about your fab background, but how did you get into tuning? Was it a hobby and turned into a full-time job? So, I could probably write a book on this whole story. Um, 
But the short answer is I was actually an employee at Tempest Racing before I took over. And uh, my boss just kind of quit coming to work one day. And I got tired of all of the customers who had cars in the shop asking if their car was done. Is my car done yet? Is my car done yet? Is my car done yet? So I basically didn't sleep for three days, sat in the corner, taught myself how to burn chips. This is when you're pulling chips in and out of the ECU and kind of figured it out. And then uh, once I figured out how to burn and upload everything, then I started pushing buttons on the dyno. Yeah, just, just started making changes from there. Not the ideal way to get thrown into a situation. With an amplifier and headphones and detonation is heard, how many degrees of timing do you pull back? 93 and M1, so you're probably not hearing detonation on M1. At least I hope not. Um, this, how many cars? It's like that shop's the same size as this one. Apparently they can fit 120 cars in their shop. Oh, this form of Q&A is pretty rad. So yeah, it seems like you guys like that stuff. So, <laughs> uh, how many degrees should you pull back? The answer to that's kind of just going to be uh, as many as you need, really. Man! I know it's kind of a half-ass answer, but it's true. When you actually like audibly monitor knock, and it's kind of interesting because it's never like a flat line of like it knocked the entire rev range. You'll find spots which it knocks, uh, which is why you get into the flat timing curve stuff. It can get a little dicey. Usually if you have a flat timing curve, that means you have too much timing in some spots or, or if you don't, then you have not enough timing in others. Uh, once you get into better fuels and stuff, it's not quite as important, it seems, but on 93 octane especially. But I think how much you pull is kind of dependent on how much is in it. So if it's, uh, let's just say it's a nitrous car and you're running five degrees of timing, if you pull five degrees of timing out of it, it's pretty excessive. But if you're running 35 degrees of timing and you pull five degrees out of it at a certain spot, then that's not too big of a deal. And then I would also say that how much you pull is gonna be sort of dependent on how how much of the knock you're getting. Like if you think of this in terms of like a traction control plot, and let's say you're going down to track or whatever, and you're just kind of like, just barely touching that traction control, you're probably not gonna make huge crazy swings on the power management side of things. But if you're, you know, exploding up into the traction control to the point where you're shooting the rods out of the bottom of the motor, then you're gonna get far more aggressive on the power management. So uh, same thing with the knock control goes. If you're just barely getting a little bit of knock, you know, maybe a couple degrees, and if you're about to melt the whole damn thing down, then uh, get a little bit more aggressive. But it's gonna be a little bit different on all of them. So this one is a very good example of what I get a lot of, especially through my email. So I'm building a new tune file for my car. I haven't started the build yet. I just wanna go ahead and get the tune out of the way first. So that's kind of like the exact opposite of how this really works. You need to put the car together and then after the car is put together, then you actually tune it. Uh, so that's, that's backwards. Maybe it just means get a base map going or something. I don't know, but yeah, you have to tune it afterwards. You can't tune it before. I know the Hollywood tune the fuel table all by itself. Not really. Uh, I've talked about this in like a hundred different videos. God damn it! It's kind of marketed that way. And yes, it will kind of make some fuel table adjustments, but it seems like nine times out of 10, it's enough to get you up and running, but I would never ever suggest just relying on the learn to tune the vehicle. So we're kind of two for two there on not going about this the right way. And then last, what is the optimum timing going to be? Thanks for answering my question so quickly. Uh, see, now I gotta wait an extra 10 minutes before I can even answer that, damn it. All right, so with timing, you don't just pick a number. So with like this email, it's impossible to help you with this question. We have no idea what engine it is. We don't know what fuel it's on. We don't know if it's supercharged, turbocharged, nitrous, naturally aspirated, we don't know anything. So you, and this is why you tune everything after you finish the build and the tune is the last aspect of it. Because if you put five cars together with all of the same parts, you're probably gonna end up with five different timing values as they're all slightly different. So back to the other guy that says I don't answer any questions. A lot of the questions that I get are kind of not answerable. Is that a word? You know what I'm saying? Hello? I'm running V6, there's a software glitch. Uh, do you think Holly will fix that? 
Uh, I think it's pretty safe to say that if there is a software glitch, then Holly's going to fix it. I have no idea. I don't work for Holly, so I don't really have a say in the matter there. But it seems like any time that there's any sort of a software update, from that point forward, every single thing that ever happens ever is a result of the software update. You got guys calling Holly tech support saying that their wife farts stink more than normal. I'm wondering if that is a result of the software update. Nine times out of 10, it's not. Maybe it is. I've never run into that one, but Holly said I should just run Dome only. It is, I mean, Dome only is literally what everybody runs. I don't think I've seen a single person on HP Dominator software ever using the map Dome setup. So yeah, I would just run Dome only. All right, it seems some cars will need double the desired boost pressure on the Dome to make desired boost. Even though back pressure is still one-on-one -on -one with boost, blah, 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 blah. What would cause this? Oh, uh, this is super common and I, you kind of don't really need to put a whole lot of thought in it. That's the nice part about CO2 is you can put 100 pounds of dome pressure on it if you want. Uh, seems plumbing has a lot to do with it, wastegate size has a lot to do with it, and some cars just for no good reason at all just take a ton of dome pressure uh, to make boost. So I wouldn't sweat that too hard. And back pressure is an awesome thing to keep an eye on, but a lot of people put way too much thought and effort in, into it and they just kind of like chase that number around so much that they ruin their lives so just throw as much co2 on it as it needs to make the boost that you want to make question i have read that running sniper efi systems can be risky for new engines particularly when a cam break-in is involved so your cam doesn't care if you have a holly sniper a holly dominator a carburetor or mechanical injection all that matters is how much fuel you're putting into the engine so if you put a sniper on and you just simply rely on the closed loop and the learn to tune it and your O2 sensor is a quarter of an inch from the end of the header and your closed loop and learn limits are at 12,000%, then yeah, you're probably gonna have problems. But at the same time, if you put a carb on the car and you don't put any jets in it and it's just dumping fuel into the engine, it's no different. So that's just a matter of setting it up correctly. I've, we've done countless cars that have come through here with snipers on new engines and haven't had any problems. So you just gotta make sure that you set it up correctly and if you are concerned that an EFI system is going to damage your engine when the engine is new then I don't necessarily understand why you would trust it when the engine isn't new. Whatever you're going to put on the car just make sure you're comfortable and confident with it from start to finish and if not either swap to something else or uh, work with a tuner or something and uh, somebody that's familiar with what's going on so they can keep an eye on it. Uh, realistically if you were to start the car up and it was running so rich that it's going to be problematic even then it's not like holly's problem you should just turn the car off and correct it or fix it so yeah any however you're delivering the fuel if it's wrong it's going to be equally as problematic as a sniper or any other efi system the number one thing i would recommend an advanced table for would be fuel pressure comp compensation i wish holly had it built in already yes so a fuel pressure compensation table works great for a small drop in fuel pressure, like fuel pressure's dropping five PSI over the course of a run or something like that. Uh, the fuel pressure compensation doesn't work that well when you have like a, a big fuel pressure drop, because even then it's just gonna peg the injector. And if, if the fuel isn't available, you can have, hang the injector wide open regardless of how big it is, and you're still not gonna have enough fuel to deliver. But most importantly, Holly should get smacked around for this a little bit. Uh, fuel pressure differential, needs to be like a, uh, a like an actual baked in channel a selectable channel without having to build any math channels or any custom this kind of custom that and you calculate in uh, fuel pressure differential absolutely needs to be added to like the, the list of core uh you know bullshit drop down like i'd just be able to click on it without having to do anything and uh, you know you get a big huge fuel pressure differential on a turbo car you need to you need to dump the CO2, you need to rev limit it, you need to do something. Because uh, again, the fuel pressure compensation tables aren't going to make up for it. So I am 100% with you on that. Uh, it needs to be a uh, like an actual selectable channel. All right, that's enough for now. I guess uh, if you have any more questions, throw them in the comments below and we'll just try and keep this thing going.